afternoon. This is Nita and Miss Panda at the Time Peace Garden. And this is one of those quickie 30 second. Oh my God, look what I found. Um, it's the first time I've seen a mushroom like this on property. Isn't he cute? Anyway, you know, I will go in and, and look at my class notes, etc. and see if I can identify him. And then talk to the guys, see if I'm right, you know. So, anyway, he's cute. Thought I'd share. Talk to you later. So I just turned the water on. And Panda will stand there in the sprinkler. Until she should decide she's had enough water. And then I can go ahead and water the front garden. Um, uh, with this water, I had to actually figure out a way so it wasn't on the ground. Because she would knock it over, and then I couldn't get anything watered. So it's actually gonna have a piece of um, rebar pounded into the ground with PVC pipe on the rebar, and then the sprinkler instead of in the ground in the PVC pipe. Um, so she's learned she can't knock it over, but she can just stand there and let it hose her down until she decides she's wet enough to do whatever it is she wants to do, and then and then the garden gets watered. <laughs> so the first five minutes on I know when I turn it on first five minutes are hers then when she leaves I will actually go see and make sure that it's gonna go you know left and right in the appropriate direction that she's not knocked that off you know It looks like it's got it going. But she loves her some water. Or I should say she loves her some sprinklers. <laughs> and she's done. <laughs> all right. Tells happy wagging away. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Evening. So we're out in garden three. Panda's hunting for that critter she knows is in that tall grass. I've never seen a critter there, but she knows it's there. I'm assuming she can smell it. Um, anyway, so we're going to harvest. Um, you can see there's some tomatoes in there. Let's see if we can... There you go. There's some tomatoes. There's, there's plenty. That's just those are the ones that are close enough, you know, um, to harvest. Um, we were also out here doing a calcium feed for everybody. Um, and I figure if I'm feeding the gourds because it's got a calcium deficiency then I'm everybody's got calcium deficiencies so everybody got a calcium supplement today um, and then I've got the water going um, but you know little things it's my first sunflower in full bloom any pretty you know and the zinnias are just just spectacular You know, just gorgeous blooms. Doesn't matter if it's the deep pinks or the light pinks or, you know, a starburst orange. Just spectacular. I will say calcium deficiency has killed me. My uh, birdhouse gourd that was here, roughly, in this area... Um, there he is. Uh, hey, focus. Anyway, it's blossom and rot. Um, so I've lost the birdhouse gourd. Which is just craziness. Um, so far I still have that basket gourd. You know, and I'm hoping at the... Uh, off of the instructions, I can come out here and calcium feed every five days. So, pretty much until further notice, I will come out here and calcium feed every five days. Um, not to exceed eight weeks, basically, is what it says. Because um, if I don't, 
I'm not going to get any gourds. I know you can see I got, I got leaves falling off and dying. Um, you know, there's a whole series of blooms that are just, just dead. And again, that's, that's all, it's all calcium deficiencies. So, we'll see. There's a couple of new blooms on it. You know, there's one there. There's, there's another one there and we'll just, we'll have to see if the, adding the extra calcium in liquid form and then coming out here with some bone meal. Um, for long term, gets me some uh, gets me some gourds, and hopefully they'll do something before. Um, how do I say it? Before it gets too cold. Otherwise, I will just try again next year. Just not in the same spot. So I did go ahead and give my crookneck squash here some calcium, although you know, between the boars, I think I've lost them. But I do want to say. Thought that was kind of interesting. The um, if you look right there, I'm gonna zoom in. There you go. It's a snake skin. Somebody came in here and peeled. See, it starts over there, and it. Hey, I've lost him. That's the hose. There he is. Starts over there. Kind of ends over here behind those leaves. So that was kind of interesting, but then, you know, I know snakes are out here. I tend to see black snakes most often. Um, black snakes eat copperheads, so I don't mind them being here. All right, I will talk to you in a few. Evening again. Yep, I'm in garden too. All right, what'd we do? We picked a couple of cucumbers, a couple of my not a pino peppers. Let's see, that one back there is just... I don't know. I think I'm going to leave him for another day. Maybe two. I don't know. Um, just like him. Just a day or two. Let him swell up. Plump up a little more. That way he's great for stuffing. Um, but anyway, I'm over here. And everybody got calcium too. Um, now this is my third year garden. And because I've worked with it and worked with it. You can look at the squash here. Um, and you can see that one. That's a baby butternut squash. Just like that one over there is a large butternut squash. I don't have blossom end rot over here. You know, I've got two really good healthy squash vines over here. Um, and that's pretty much for everything, you know. Um, even my uh, self-seeded turnip here, you know, besides a little worm damage... They're doing awesome. So, but what I figure is if I've got a calcium deficiency going on in garden number one, or it's garden three, but it's a first year garden, then I should go ahead and just boost up the calcium over here. So I did the same thing. Um, it's a liquid calcium. I think, I don't know if I showed you a picture of it. Um, if not, it's rot stop. Um, and it's a, it's a concentrate and you mix it in with water. Um, and then you water with it type thing. Um, and that way they've got a, a quick boost of calcium, you know, right at root level. Um, we're not supposed to have rain for the next couple of days. Matter of fact, we're supposed to be in the high 90s. So I'm going to give these guys a good drink of water with calcium. Um, that way they're soaking up the extra water because of the heat over the next three days. They'll get that boost of calcium that they need, um, you know, should they need it. And um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, and then probably in the next 30 minutes or so when I'm done watering everybody, or at least, you know, the calcium portion of the water, um, and then let the soaker hose do the rest. Um, I've got to come out here with my sprays, both at the tomato plants to make sure I don't have army worms come back. Um, my eggplants down there because I have taken the, I've taken the, the tarp off because you can see right there center screen. I'll get closer so it's, it's not all blurry. Um, he's in bloom. And once the blooms happen, that the eggplants need bees. So there he is. It's, this is my first bloom. And you, you know. So I got to get them sprayed. And they've got a little bit of yellowing going on on the leaves. So again, the calcium might help these guys out. Whew. So uh, cucumelons are looking great. They're like halfway up the little trellis thing, which is awesome. 
Hopefully they'll start producing fruit. Um, I already showed you my butternut squash. Isn't that awesome? The uh, potatoes, I've got like one or two blooms left. Um, but it's time to dig them up. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning. Um, I've just got to make sure I'm really careful. Again, heat index is supposed to be crazy. We're supposed to be high 90s um, with the heat index putting us at over 100. So um, my blue butterfly pea is extended well beyond his trellis. Huh. You know, strawberries are still just doing what they do for, you know, non-fruiting season. And yeah, I've still got, you know, blooms and baby gourds, or not gourds, but a butternut squash. That's an awesome turnip over there. You know, don't ask me how he got there. I don't plant turnips with my blueberries. Hmm. All right. Onions are still doing great. The, uh, mostly I mean, you can see I've still got babies everywhere. Babies there, babies there. Baby's there. So it looks like they all took. My right, baby's there. You know, baby's there. But they got some calcium too. You know? And then of course you got the mamas. Mamas are like, hey, and what's crazy is, because I did not harvest them, even the mamas are separating out at the base. So instead of there just being three here, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's almost fifteen right here in a cluster. You can kind of see them from a top view. Um, now again, I did that because that one and that cluster was the cluster that went through Snowmageddon and didn't have no problems. I mean, at all. Um, they probably would have been really sweet for me to harvest and eat, and eat them this year. Um, but since they know what, you know, 18 degrees feels like and lived through it, all of their babies are now planted. So I will have a large area of onions next year, which is awesome. Because store-bought onions, while they're convenient, just don't taste the same. All right, and with that, because I don't want to ramble on, I will talk to y'all later. It's just the little harvest from today. So these three are Anaheim peppers. Um, these are nice and fat. Just, oh my God, I can't wait to stuff them. Um, cucumber for today. It's my nata pino for today. Um, tomatoes. Um, I have red tomatoes. I have yellow tomatoes. And I have orange tomatoes. Um, none of the pear tomatoes were ripe. Um, and then this one, I went ahead and picked him. It's the kind of damage that uh, you can see where it started to split, and then an army worm got in there and started chewing on him. No, I'll finish letting him ripe on the, in the on the come on on the windowsill. If that makes sense, and then I'll cut this portion of the tomato out. Um, same thing with this one. He's got a little bit of hornworm damage or army worm damage, um, so he's not going to grow anymore. But he'll finish ripening on the um, on the windowsill, and you can see this is where somebody was chewing too. Trying to chew off the skin. So, anyway, everybody got sprayed tonight. Um, again, I do my sprays at night or very early in the morning. So the, the the oils that's in it that make it attached to the leaves or stick to the leaves don't burn the leaves during the heat of the day. So, but yeah, it's the harvest for today. Um, pretty good. All right, I will talk to y'all later.